from the SABC's acting political editor, Sophie Mukwena, a little earlier on. President Robert Mugabe has spoken out for the first time since he was forced out of uh, Zimbabwe's presidency after 38 years. Now, before we hear what he had to say, let's take a look at how those events unfolded at the end of last year. On the 6th of November 2017, President Robert Mugabe fired his first vice president, Emerson Mnangagwa. The official reason for that expulsion from the presidency was that he consistently and persistently exhibited traits of disloyalty, disrespect, deceitfulness and unreliability. And then on the 13th of November, the army warned that the military would step in to deal with the spate of purges that had gripped the governing party. The next day, army trucks were seen moving from military bases to the Harare city centre. On the 15th of November 2016, it was reported that the army had confined President Robert Mugabe to his private residence in Borrowdale, known as Blue Roof. The military vehicles also blocked roads outside Parliament. The state broadcaster, the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation, was seized by the military. On the 18th of November 2017, Zimbabweans took to the streets in support of calls for President Mugabe to step down. And on the 19th of November last year, President Mugabe delivered a much-anticipated address to the nation. He'd been expected to resign, but he did not. This was the same day his party, ZANU-PF, dismissed him as its leader. ZANU-PF Central Committee held an emergency meeting and resolved to recall President Mugabe as party leader. And they replaced him with the then recently fired pres Vice President Emerson Mnangagwa. The party nominated Mnangagwa as ZANU-PF's interim president, first secretary and presidential nominee for the 2018 election slated for July, August later this year. And on the 21st of November, Mugabe resigned as the president of the country after 37 years in power. He'd been in power since independence in 1980, when he won that inaugural election and became prime minister. Speaker of Zimbabwe's National Assembly, Jacob Mudenda, read Mugabe's resignation letter to legislators who had begun the impeachment process against the former president. Three days later, Emerson Mnangagwa was sworn in as president. So, former President then Robert Mugabe has called for dialogue following the events that led to his resignation last year. He spoke for the first time to the media about his removal from office. Speaking in Harare, the former leader says he's still aggrieved by what transpired at the end of last year. On my side, I always had Emerson Mnangagwa. I brought him in to government. But I never thought he whom I had nurtured and brought into government and whose life I had worked so hard in prison to save as he was threatened with hanging that one day he would be the man who would turn against me but there it was there it is it happened on the 15th of November, he was assisted by the army. I said it was a coup d'etat. Some people have refused to call it a coup d'etat. And what happened? He could never have assumed the presidency of the country without the army. It's the army which assisted him. 
Dem Army made it made sure that the other organs of state were neutralized, completely neutralized. They neutralized the Central Intelligence Organization, many of whose members were bashed with their heads cracked. And this is not an exaggeration. Some of them are missing to this day. Their guns were taken away from them. The police at their armory completely emptied. Their guns had gone, disappeared. Who had taken them? The army. And then in our environment rolled what we never knew we had, some tanks. Oh, did we have these tanks? I was told they are ancient ones. 1914 to 1918 tanks. T-63 or 60 something. There they were rolling, armored cars, running and people not allowed to move from one place to another unless they got the permission of the army. Searches were taking place left, right and center. Persons being arrested It was truly a military takeover. There was no movement permissible unless that movement was checked and allowed by the army. That's what it was. I don't know what you would want to call it. But our people had not experienced such an environment before. We had prided ourselves on being very democratic. Every day, Those young men and women we have are being called one by one to be asked very silly questions. Where is Jonathan? Professor Jonathan Moyo. Where is Kasukuere? Where is Zuavo? They don't know. They are mere cooks, they are mere messengers, gardeners. You don't expect them to know. Why worry them? Ask me. I don't even know where they are. Yes, once upon a time, we assisted them to get to safety. Guns, volleys of bullets were being fired at their houses, on their houses. And a cry came, please, Please, and it was my wife, Mama, save us. Please save us. I wasn't there. She organized some of 
has security and say go go and save them what happens to you i don't know you may die on the way but go and she would put together the cars and the persons that she she had i wasn't here and so they were brought to here to our house jonathan professor jonathan moyo kasukwere and their families the one had about four children wife and four children the other wife and three children and we kept them here and said to them we will keep your families we said that to the men but you men find your way out go where you can but we will keep your wife and the children here and save them and so they left we don't know how and we don't know where they went and we kept their families here until the situation was slightly better then they asked to get back to their homes today amazon is no longer on my side i'm no longer the president he is i called him president the other day and he said oh no no don't please call me president call me emerson i said i can't call you emerson anymore okay i'll call you ed and you're coming here we hope we get the views i have published i don't hate emerson i brought him into government i would want to work with him but he must be proper he is in proper way he is illegal and if it is to correct that illegality that he would want me to discuss with him and we we must undo this disgrace which we have imposed on ourselves we don't deserve it we don't deserve it please we don't deserve it zimbabwe doesn't deserve it we want to be a constitutional country yes we may have our shortcomings here and there but overall we must obey the law become constitutional people must be chosen it to be in government in the proper way i will discuss i'm willing to discuss i'm willing to assist in that process but i must be invited properly invited for that discussion currently i am isolated and i am glad i have your company 
well, as defiant as ever. You could say almost vintage Robert Mugabe there. We'll bring you that exclusive interview with the former Zimbabwean president uh, talking to our Sophie Mugwena in later bulletins. Stay with us.